Hi, this is James Gorbachev live here with a top list video. Today I'm doing the top five worst books I read part two, and for today's uh, theme, I'm going to do five bad horror novels I read in the past. And spoiler alert, as I will be giving away crucial details uh, during the re uh, each review of um, the novels I'm about to discuss. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Sand Trap by Caroline B. Coney, published in 1993 by Avon. Plot. Jenny Fraser just finished her shift at the local mall in North Carolina in the fictional town of Holly Oak. All she wants to do is get home to her husband Ross, however their marriage is on the brink of collapse after their son died in an accident. And Ross lost both of his legs during the Vietnam War, and because Jenny w was part of a member of the local church, the members have guilted her for having a soldier as a husband, accusing both of them as failures to God. While driving on the highway, Jenny spots a red Cadillac pulled over to the side of the road with a truck stuck in the ditch with two men standing in front of each other. After she passes by, Jenny suddenly hears a gunshot go off, then she is chased off the road by the man who just murdered the other guy. Kevin, who is obsessed with hunting game and has nearly been sent to prison twice for two, after two hunting accidents in the past, Kevin believes that Jenny saw him shoot Gary, a family member of his who came to help Kevin after getting his truck stuck in a ditch in the sand after shooting a deer. Kevin steals Gary's red Cadillac and chases Jenny off the road and crashes her car. She flees before Kevin can get his hunting rifle out and runs through a church then onto a golf course. While trying to stay a step ahead of Kevin, Jenny's husband Ross is growing worried that something has happened to his wife along with Gary's wife who is puzzled to find her husband is not home and goes out looking for him. Jenny's house is just across the golf course and hopes to make it back home to phone police while trying to avoid Kevin's crosshair as he won't stop till she's dead. What I didn't like with this novel. On the synopsis, Sandtrap sounds like a good thriller horror novel that Richard Lehman or someone else would write, but it's very dull and has too much melodrama along with flashbacks that happen just right before something happens. The characters were boring and unlikable. Jenny is always complaining about everything, and even though she doesn't believe in God, she keeps saying, help me God, or oh God, get me out of here. Kevin is a one-layer character with his only goal to kill and doesn't have any other features to make him more intimidating. While some of the detail is good with locations in some places, however, it doesn't offer more when needed, and the pacing could be too fast at times, along with unwanted filler. And alas, I really don't like the title. It doesn't really fit with the story at all. The Deluge by Mark Morris, published in 2007 by 47 North. Hot. A flood hits England, causing massive flooding in major areas, including London. A father takes her daughter along with her friend, including a few other survivors, as they escape the city, heading north to the highlands to stay alive. However, the flood is the only thing the survivors have to deal with. Creatures begin appearing out of the water and begin attacking anyone on land, and a gang of dangerous criminals roaming around looking for anything to salvage. What I didn't like with this novel. While the concept of the deluge sounds good, however, Mark Morris fails to execute it. There isn't any prologue just throws you into the flood with little background how it started. The story goes back and forth from third person to die entries by the father's daughter, which I didn't like these two different writing styles mixed within the story. Not enough carnage with the alien creatures, and what I hated the most was how a group of older men kidnapped the, daughter, the father's daughter along with her friend, wanting to breathe them, believing the human race is going extinct. While the father and other survivors are able to, to find the two teenage girls and stop the men from raping them, but spares them. After leaving the flooded ruins of London behind them and going to the Highlands, while the two teenage girls are exploring like they did back in London, they are once again captured by the same group of men that somehow have found them and reached them in a short period of time. And to ensure this time the girls can't escape them, the men poke out their eyes and keep them locked up in cages. After I read this scene, I threw this song in the garbage for how horrible it was. It was like Mark didn't know what to add next or wasn't sure what alien creatures to bring in, so it brought back the gain of rapists, disregarding the fact they were miles away from them. Just to make something happen was terrible. Felt this scene was taken out 20 days later, which wasn't really creative when taking scenes from films and adding them into the story rather than write original ideas. The Feast by Grant Masterton, published 1988 by Pinnacle. Plot. 
Chai McLearn works as a restaurant critic as he's writing a series of reviews of the best places to eat across America for guidebooks. Chai and with him is his son Martin, which Charlie is trying to repair his relationship after having divorced with his wife while on this long road trip, which Martin isn't enjoying at all, and wants to spend real father and son time as Charlie is always busy with work. As they reach the town of Allen's Corner, Charlie discovers a fancy restaurant called La Porza and wants to visit it so he can add it to the guidebook. Martin is annoyed and wants to return home if his father is going to keep visiting restaurants, which leads into an argument. While at a bar, Charlie meets a very attractive woman that flirts with him, which leads to the two going back to the hotel for sex. The next day, Martin is missing and nobody in town has seen him and the local police aren't helping. Charlie believes the town and its people have something to do with his son being kidnapped. While speaking with the woman he met last night, Charlie learns that the Raporza, translated to the resting place, isn't just a fancy restaurant. It's a cult that believes in consuming flesh, not just from other people, but their own flesh as well. What I didn't like with this novel. While the idea of a cannibal restaurant sounds great, however, when it's set in a small, quiet town that hardly gets any visitors, which becomes a plot hole when it's revealed all the town residents feed off the flesh of visitors, but it hardly gets any. Now, if this restaurant was set in a major city where it could easily get victims, then it would be more believable. Just like the whole self-eating part of the story, along with its characters, as none of them I didn't care for, pacing was slow and took too long for the plot to get moving. This novel had so much potential, but misses the mark very badly. The Breeze Horror by Candance Caganegro, published 1980 by Onyx. Plot. When a space shuttle is hit by a meteorite, causing it to explode and release its toxic waste payload, which falls back to Earth. Single mother Sandy, along her son, are stuck in a traffic jam when she hears the breaking story of toxic waste raining down in, New York, in the New York area. The radio states those listening to flee to Breeze Island for safety, which Sandy gets out of the jam. During this time, Manson, a man who's been off his meds, kills a bird in the park, then visits a nurse who he mur murders, taking her uniform as the hospital is sending its patients to Breeze Island. However, they aren't so lucky as they are covered in toxic waste, causing them to mutate into zombies, as the residents dub them Beachers since they are being quarantined on the beach. Manson happens to see Sandy, mistaking her for a woman he loved years ago, believing it's her and wants this woman to himself. Things go from bad to worse when the main bridge is blown up to keep the infection from spreading and the beachers begin attacking the residents, forcing those to fight back as the infection is getting worse. What I didn't like with this novel. When I first heard of the Breeze Horror, it sounded like a fun horror novel with lots of gore, violence, and zombies. However, after a good chunk into the story, it doesn't go well. I don't like how Sandy has to be part of what everyone is doing in order to get the story moving. In one scene, Sandy is attacked when she goes to her neighbor to check on them, and the wife is staying their son has returned from the armory, so the husband asks Sandy to go out into the shed to get some wine, which has a shower built into it, and is attacked by a monster, but is able to escape by smashing a bottle over its head. Next, Sandy goes to the police station to report what happened and feels the need to look for her neighbor's son, and sure enough, her, her neighbor's son is fine, and the reason why nobody could find him because he was working so hard. I also felt dialogue was bad at times, along with how scenes were written. Another scene that made me facepalm at the dumbness of Sandy is when Manson breaks into Sandy's house and hides under her bed. When she returns, there's a bad smell, but searches all the rooms but doesn't think to check under her bed till it's too late. And lastly, the police chief is a scumbag who doesn't help anyone but himself and is a total coward when facing off against the Beechers, which leads to the death of many residents. The Meg by Steve Allen, published in 1997 by Doubleday. Plot. When a retired Navy diver, Jonas Taylor, is asked by a Japanese millionaire to help him with a project he's been working working on in the Mariana Trench. However, things go horribly wrong when two Megalodons are awakened and try to escape only for the male Megalodon to get killed as the female Megalodon escapes. Meanwhile, Jonas's ex-wife Maggie overhears the escaped Megalodon and plans to film it, believing she'll become very famous and rich. To ensure nobody tries killing it, she gets every animal activist group part of her cunning plan and even a law against hunting this Megalodon. And it isn't long till this Megalodon begins feeding on both wildlife and people, but Taylor isn't going to let his ex-wife keep this dangerous animal alive and plans to kill it. What I didn't like with this novel. 
This sounds like a fun idea in concept, but the pacing felt rushed at times. Almost all the characters within the mag are unlikable, as many of them make dumb and terrible choices that lead to the death of others or cause future problems within the story. And there are many events that happen which I find very unbelievable. From passing a bill that bans hunting the Megalodon, and yet the United States government along with the rest of the world doesn't see anything wrong with this after it kills a large number of whales, sharks, and 2,000 whale watchers are killed. Nor trying to get nor trying to capture it to prevent it from harming the food chain. None of these events make the world leaders have second thoughts. It just feels nobody gives a damn what's going on and have little care for anyone else than themselves. When you have a poor constructed novel with a bunch of unlikable characters and mindless violence, then there isn't anything worth reading the Meg. Alright, that is it for the video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And, um... I had to redo this entire video again as uh, the first time I uh, ed this uh, recorded the video yesterday and uploaded it. My father, my father messaged me and said, uh, "James, you didn't edit your video." I'm like, "What?" He said, "There are parts that are, if they're unedited." So I watched my original video and discovered that um, my video program completely screwed up the video that I edited yesterday. So. I had to do this whole entire thing over again, but hopefully this time it come out much better. <laughs> uh, Alright. Um, I am, I, as I said, I have begun reading The Manhattan Transfer, so I'll read more of it tonight, and I have a review up soon. Then I will begin reading Chainsaw Terror and the other books I have planned. And this upcoming spring, I am thinking of doing a book series, but I'm only going to do one, not two, just one book series, because having two going at once is just too much going to do differently this time, uh, unlike the time I did the other two book series, is I'm going to read the book of the series I'm going to pick, and then just just when I, just when I post the trailer for the book series I'm doing, I'll have the first book done, have a review out, a re have a review out, so that way yeah, I have the series going, and I can just go into the next book, and that way it's not like I have to, I post a trailer, and then I have to begin reading that book, and then kind of um, along with the other books, so, so that way it makes it much more easier to, to do this stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to October Library and the YouTube channel the same name, a place you can post your review of fiction. Until then, I'll catch you later.